Hello and welcome to episode 15 of the Little Craft Room podcast. My name's Nicola, I run a Little Craft Room many places and you can find some of my social media links down below. Um, hopefully the audio is working, I've had a little bit of a of an audio issue <laughs> trying to get this done, so hopefully um, it's all working. Um, if you are a new viewer, welcome to my podcast and if you're a returning viewer, welcome back to my podcast. Um, so this is just a, a little place where I can talk about my knitting, talk about my crochet and just chat about what I've been up to. Um, so I'm actually going to start off with a little bit of a life update today um, because this is my first podcast for about four months. I've, I've kind of, it's been a while since I've done a podcast. Um, I, I really haven't been well recently. Um, I've been very ill um, since pretty much the start of February and um, I haven't been up to podcasting at all. In fact, I've I barely left the house for quite a few months. Um, I'm feeling a bit better now than I was, although the bar was fairly on the ground for that. Um, but still don't know, still don't know exactly what's wrong with me. Um, still doing some some investigating um but i am trying to get back trying to trying to carry on with my life um it's it's been a rough couple of months um but like i'm here and i've been knitting and crocheting this whole time uh, so i've got so many so many things i've made i'm not going to go through every single one of them in this episode because we would be here for hours and while I definitely could talk about that for hours, it's probably a bit much for one episode. So <laughs> I will, um, I'll kind of intersperse them um, through the next few episodes. Um, I've got some stuff that I'm going to show you today, um, but yeah, I will, I will dot them through <laughs> a few episodes rather than lumping them all on you for now. So uh, let's start off with what I am wearing. So today I am wearing, I only finished this one not long ago, you'll have to excuse the shorts. It's very warm in the craft room today. Um, so this is the Sweet Summer Tea by Evelyn and Peter Crochet. It's a free pattern, it's available on their website. And I finished this not too long ago, actually. It was a couple of weeks ago I finished this. Um, so I will, I'll do a turn. So kind of the standard, just kind of plain t-shirt pattern. Um, but I really like it. It's kind of got an oversized fit it's really comfortable um and yeah so um it was a super easy pattern I'll talk about the pattern first really really easy very beginner friendly pattern um it was essentially kind of just two panels that you sew together so really really nice pattern um I finished this in about a week um so it was a really quick one to work up um, although granted I wasn't doing much else um, but yeah so it took about a week um, honestly blocking it took more time than making it um, I had it kind of pinned out for probably longer than it needed um, but yeah in terms of like actual crocheting a about a week did this um, although I could tell that I wasn't well when I was making it because I don't know if anybody else gets this when I'm not well my brain does not work properly and I almost made a very big boo-boo um, when I was making this because you had the two panels and then you have to kind of sew across the top and up the sides so that you join them into the t-shirt shape and there were instructions on the pattern as to how you do it and my, in my brain I went oh that seems really complicated why don't you just go like all the way up and down along three sides it took an embarrassingly long time for me to realise that that would leave you without armholes. Like, and when I say embarrassingly long, I mean like a good hour. I mean, thankfully I didn't do it. <laughs> I was only, I was kind of like planning ahead in my mind, but um, it took it took longer than it should have for me to go, that's not gonna work. <laughs> but you know, I, I did it right. I decided to follow the pattern. I have an awful habit of doing that, of kind of reading a pattern and going, oh, I've got an easier way to do this. I'll just do my way. Um, so very glad that I hadn't gotten round to doing it my way um, before I've realised why my way was absolutely not better. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it was uh, super easy um, and it's kind of really comfy, really slouchy um, and it uses DK weight yarn. 
So for this one, I used Arcane Fibre Works. This is actually, um, I was gifted this yarn by Arcane Fibre Works. They got in touch with me and asked if I wanted to try some of their yarns. Um, I will put a, a thing up because I am now an affiliate with Arcane Fibre Works. So if you um, use my code, a little craft room, it will give you 10% off your first purchase. Uh, for full disclosure, I do earn some commission from that. Um, just to be totally open. Um, but yeah, 10% off your first purchase with Arcane Fibre Works if you use the code A Little Craft Room. So, yes, this is one of their yarns. This is their Cozy Cocoa colorway. Um, it is an 8020 merino nylon blend. Um, and it's it's really squidgy. It's 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 a super kind of squidgy yarn. Um it's uh yeah, it's really lovely. Um I like I said, I used the shade Cozy Cocoa and I used about 860 meters so four and a bit skeins in fact this is that's what i have left over from the fifth skein um so i was i couldn't have done it with four i was very close to managing it with four um but it, it was just a, just that little bit i had to i had to go into the fifth skein um but i still got a decent chunk of it left so um i might put that away for a scrappy project um i will absolutely be using it um and i'm going to talk more about the arcane fiber works yarns later on um i've got some more to show you which i'm very excited about um but yeah i'm i'm really liking this this top it's uh, because of the oversized fit it means that it's not too warm um you know there's kind of a nice amount of air movement um you could have like a a shorter armhole a longer armhole sorry if you wanted to if you wanted to have more of a dropped um kind of armhole then you absolutely could have um but i quite like i quite like a more t-shirt looking um looking fit so i went i can't remember if they i can't remember if they recommended how high you go up um but i just matched it up on each side um i did the i did the top and then kind of put it on and then pinched at the sides where I was, where I would have liked the armholes to be, and then just did that. Um, but there would be absolutely nothing stopping you from having a more, a more dropped armhole. Um, and that's what I really like about this pattern is that it was, it was so easy. Um, it was really easy to understand how it was going to fit together. And like I said, it's a free pattern, so you know, can't complain. Um, so yes, featured item of this week is the Sweet Summer Tea by Evelyn and Peter Crochet. So with me having been doing very little for several months, like I said, I have so many finished projects, I've handpicked some to talk about on this, on this particular episode, because like I said, if I went through all of them, we would be here for hours. Um, so the first one I'm gonna talk about is one that I was about halfway through um, last time we spoke, um, which was my second Lawrenson sweater. Um, I made one Lawrence and sweater in 2021, right at the start of 2021. Absolutely loved it, but the yarn was just, it didn't quite sit right on my skin. Um, my skin appears to find that yarn a little bit itchy, but I loved the sweater so much, so I thought I would make another one. And not long after episode 14, I finished the Lawrence and sweater part two. So... I think last time, last time I showed this, there were no sleeves, there was no neckband, and I think I was about, about here on the body. Um, I normally keep a stitch marker locked onto projects so that I can show the difference in between podcasts, but I've worn this several times um, because I finished it so long ago, so there's no stitch marker in this one. Um, but yes, it is my finished Lawrence and sweater. I will pop a picture up of me wearing it. You will have to excuse the colour of my neck. Like I said, I was very ill and that was that was the colour that I was sporting at the time. Um, hence why there's no face on that picture. Um, but yes, this is everything I wanted it to be. Um, for this one, um, no, I'll do pattern first. Uh, so it's a Lily Kate Makes pattern. Um, she is one of my absolute favourite knitwear designers. I just adore pretty much everything that she comes out with. It's really annoying, actually. Um, so, yes, it's a Lily Kate Makes pattern. This is my second one. Um, this actually only took three weeks to make in its entirety. 
So not, you know, not the quickest pattern I've ever done, but it was a pretty speedy one. Um, it is mostly stockinette stitch. Um, so it's nothing, nothing too fiddly. Um, and I really enjoyed making it just as much the second time as I did the first time. The one change I did make was I made this one slightly longer. The, um, the last one I made was a slightly more cropped fit and that absolutely works with some outfits. Um, but there are some outfits where I was kind of putting the jumper on and going, you know what, I really wish this were a bit longer. So this is the longer version. The longer version does include detail that the cropped version doesn't have, um, which is this. And I really like that kind of, just that flare on the ribbing. So this ribbing goes all the way down from the armholes um, and it goes all the way down to the hem. And I just love that little flare detail at the side. Um, it just It just makes a really nice, a nice detail. Um, so that's just the slight difference between the first version of the Lawrence and sweater and the second version. Um, but yarn choice was key for this one because like I said, my last one, just my skin just doesn't quite like it, especially on the back of my neck. Um, so for this one, I used Malabrigo uh, Rios in the color Gris or Gris. I'm not sure how it's supposed to be pronounced. Um, I used very nearly four skeins of this. It was um, yeah, very close to four full skeins. I had a little bit left over. Um, this is a 100% merino yarn. I believe it's superwash. Um, and off the top of my head, I can't remember, but the reason I say this is because when I was winding this, it was so slippy. And then when I was kind of caking it up, the yarn just kept slipping over itself and it made the, the most messy cake ever. Um, so I think it was superwash. Um, but it is so much nicer on my skin. My skin is very happy to wear this. Um, and it just feel the, the drape is lovely. Like you can, you can see by the way that it's just falling. This just has the most gorgeous drape. Um, the one thing that I have found, and this is absolutely nobody's fault. It's just, just an accident of the way that it's, the way that it's worked up. I don't know whether this is going to come through on camera. Oh, it kind of does. You can see that this is a semi-solid rather than a solid but just from the way that the colors have gone they're forming like diagonal lines just it's just the way that the dye has worked just the way that the size has worked um so they are forming just that ever so slight diagonal spiral which when i wear it sometimes it's just a bit of an optical illusion it looks it looks like it's wonky at the bottom it's not it's just because of that slight shading difference in the um, in the yarn dyeing, which I personally just think is hilarious. Um, but because I, I, when I was first taking pictures, I thought, oh, have I made that wonky? No, I haven't. It's just it's just the way that the dye is the dye is taken on the yarn. Um, but yeah, it is it is definitely straight at the bottom. I'm just trying to make sure I'm holding it straight now. Um, and um, what I, uh, the ribbing as well at the bottom and at the sleeves, it is a slightly twisted rib. So it's purling, but then knitting through the back loop. So it just makes that rib pop just ever so slightly more, which I love very much. Um, so I am incredibly glad that I've made my second version of this. Um, it was one that I had intended to do um, for a while. And um, yeah, it's just very, very nice. Very nice. So the second version of the Lawrence and sweater is finished. So that is my first finished object. And my second one is a bit of a first for me. So one of my New Year's resolutions this year was to do a colour work sweater. I've never done knitted colour work before. And I told myself at the start of the year, um, this would be the year where I would, I would try colour work for the first time. Uh, let's get rid of, let's get rid of Lawrence in there. So I, I had some yarn already set aside and um, I knew exactly which sweater I wanted to do. And I finished, I uh, started and finished <laughs> while in between podcasts the dark water sweater by Jennifer Steingess. And this is my dark water sweater, which I'm very, very proud of. Um, like I said, it's my first ever color work. So actually that has turned out 
very well, I think, personally. I mean, you know, I'm sure in a few years, once I've done some more collar work, maybe I'll look back at it and be like, that's terrible. Why was I ever proud of that? But I am so proud of that. Look at that. So let's let's just pop a picture of me wearing it. There we go. Um, I am over the moon with this. I have been meaning to make a Jennifer Steinger sweater for a long time. She always makes the most beautiful colour work designs. They are very, very pretty. And um, there was this one and the Garden Gate that I've had on my list for forever. Um, so I finally made a Jennifer Steinger sweater and I've finally done a colour work sweater. Um, I actually already have the yarn for the next Jennifer Steinger sweater, that the Garden Gate one. I've had that yarn kind of set aside for a while. Um, I think I've just been a little little nervous about doing it because I'm one of those people that just wants to get it perfect first time which it's not a great mindset to have but but, meh. Um, but because of that I had been practicing with colour work on some scrap yarn before I started this just about how to how to actually make the stitches and catching floats and everything I've I properly properly practiced um, so with this um, I think the longest I went between floats was five stitches. I was catching them at least every five. Most of the time it was between three and five stitches. Um, so I did a lot of practice before then because I just wanted to to get it out and I didn't want to have to pull back. Um, I hate I hate frogging. Um, so I really didn't want to have to pull back and start fixing anything. So yeah, I am extremely proud of this. Um, I used Shepier's Metropolis yarn. Um, so the main colour, this kind of gorgeous kind of burnt orange colour, is Krakow. And then the contrast colour, this creamy white, is Kota. Um, so the Kota colourway. Um, I used almost five skeins of the Krakow and about half a skein of the Kota. It really wasn't very much um, for the Kota. Um, so this is a 75% merino yarn and 25% nylon. It is very warm, is uh, the first thing I will say. It's very cosy. I have worn this out um, and it kept me perfectly warm. I was at, sat outside in it in April. Was it April? It might have been April. Um, and I was sat outside in it until nine o'clock and was perfectly happy, Wasn't didn't feel the cold at all. Um, so to be honest, I, I did know that this yarn was already going to be nice because I had used it in one of the scarves that I made for Christmas when I did my, um, my mass scarf production. Um, so I already knew that I liked it. Um, and I knew that it worked up into a really nice fabric. Um, so yeah, I am, I, I just can't, I'm so happy with this. Um, for my first colour work, I think I've done very, very well. Um, and it definitely won't be my last colour work as well. I enjoyed the process. Uh, it took a little longer than standard knitting, obviously, because um, you've got two colours and you're kind of hyper-focusing. Um, the way that I have discovered I do colour work is I have um, my main colour in my right hand and my contrast colour in my left. Um, so I'm doing both, which has been interesting because I am not a continental style knitter. I am very definitely an English style thrower knitter. So getting used to picking up from my left hand was interesting, but I did, um, when I was practicing it, I, um, one of the ways that I learned how to do continental style knitting is with a tension ring that I got from a lovely friend of mine, Dawn Gill Designs. Um, she makes these kind of knitting and crochet tension rings. So this was how I, how I started <laughs> learning how to do um, my color work, stranded knitting. Um, so that, that has, uh, a lot of credit, a lot of credit is due to that little ring for helping me to, um, I don't think I'm going to transition to continental style knitting. I think that's probably a bit far, but it has definitely, I can do it for colour work. And I think that's going to be how I do my colour work. No idea how I'm going to work with like more than two strands because I do want to, I do want to do more colour work and more complex colour work. Um, I guess I'll just have to wait until that happens. Um, but yes, so with a lot of my projects, I've said in the past as well, I tend to associate them very strongly with whatever I'm watching at the time. So my 
my partner is a big gamer and usually I'll be knitting or crocheting and he'll be playing a game and I'll just be watching his gameplay. So um, for this one, he, he started going through all the Final Fantasy games recently. He decided to try and play through them all from one to however many they're on now. <laughs> Um, so for this one, my main association is Final Fantasy 1 and 2, because um, it was a mixture of both of them uh, when I was making this, as well as associating it with being pretty sofa bound um, and not like barely leaving the house in a month. Um, so yeah, that's the association, the major association with this sweater is the Final Fantasy games. And to be honest, I can practically hear some of the music when the airship takes off. That's, I've got that in my head from when I'm making this. I can practically hear the music from the airship taking off and trying to land and then it doesn't. And yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, so I'm very happy with this. I won't be wearing it much for a few months because it is uh, very, very warm. We've had a little bit of a warm spell. So with any luck, this will now sit and wait until the temperatures start to, until the season turns but when it does I will have it there ready which I'm very excited about. Um, this took, this actually took almost exactly a month. I started it on the 1st of March and I finished it on the 30th so it was actually quite a nice set set time for that one um, which you know for my first colour work project I think isn't too bad. Um, you know I could, it could have taken me a lot longer and it probably would have if I was out doing things, but I wasn't. So, so there we go. My first ever colour work project that I'm very, very proud of. No, I, I need to keep correcting this. My first ever knitted colour work project. I've done quite a few crochet ones, but my first ever knitted colour work project. So that is the dark water sweater. Um, another thing that I've also finished, I don't have to show though. So I will be popping uh, a couple of pictures up here, is my latest design, which is now live, it is now available. This is the Platinum Scarf. So I haven't shown this on this podcast at all because it was a present for the um, my friend who is wearing it in the pictures. Um, this is my first ever knitting design as well, which was very exciting. Um, but I had this, I've had this planned out for, coming up to a year now um I've kind of had the idea for this um and I am very very happy with it actually um I used knitting for olive heavy merino in slate gray so I do have the one of the swatches that I made um which looks kind of see-through there it's uh it's a lot chunkier in the in the scarf um so this was actually my first time using knitting for olive yarn I've been dying to use it for ages um, and this was my first time actually using it and uh, won't be the last. Um, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed the knitting for Olive. Um, so I believe it's 100% merino. I don't think it's super wash off the top of my head, but I can't remember. I don't think it is. Um, it's very squishy. It's very, very squidgy yarn and it blocked out beautifully as well. This was a this was a gorgeous one to block. And when I blocked the scarf as well, it just it immediately fell into the pattern I wanted it to, which was very satisfying. Um, so while I don't have the actual scarf, I do have some, like I said, I do have my swatches. Um, I, I only made it in a separate yarn because actually this one took a lot longer to arrive than I expected. So I started swatching my my design idea um, in a different yarn. This is Shetland. This is West Yorkshire Spinners, the colours, uh, the Croft um, in Seafield. So my intention was to do like a a cable coming, like coming through the middle with like cables rounding out of the central panel and going up. Um, and it also has um, some cables around the side that are um, mirrored in the direction that they're cabling in um as well as some just kind of straight knitted um columns that's the word i'm after um so it was very very much a columnar pattern i wanted so like very defined very defined columns um and i'm really happy with how it turned out um so this like i said it was made for my friend um 
and it was it was a Christmas present despite him only receiving it in April um but it's because I didn't see him it's because I didn't see him and I wanted to give it to him in person um so yeah he did receive it in April just as people weren't using scarves anymore but he has it ready for winter so it's fine <laughs> um so the name for this one the platinum scarf um this actually is a nod to um one of his uh D&D characters so one of uh characters from one of our Dungeons and Dragons campaigns um and this character was always very fabulously dressed um so I thought if I'm making him a wearable item then I wanted to just give a nod nod to that character so the platinum scarf um <laughs> It is intended to be a unisex scarf as well, um, because it's kind of the way that knitting and crochet works. A lot of the the wearable items are marketed more towards women. Uh, some of them are just more feminine looking. Um, so I really wanted this to be a unisex scarf um, that would be uh, happy to be worn by anybody. So I am very, very happy with my first my first knitting pattern and like I said that has now gone live as well so it is now available to buy on Ravelry, Lovecraft and Etsy so I am very excited uh, to see if anybody wants to make it I'm very excited to see how theirs turns out um, obviously it's been tested so I have seen other versions um, but it's always really nice when people make your patterns it's it's a very special kind of excitement so that, yeah, that is another thing that I have been very hard at work on since since the last podcast. So the Platinum Scarf, my latest design um, knitting pattern available now. Um, so, as I mentioned, I have way more finished objects than the three that I have mentioned. But I'm not going to go through them all because I will absolutely be here forever. So I'm going to leave the finished objects there for today I will show some more in upcoming episodes um, and I'm going to move to uh, my current works in progress for now um, so I'm going to start off I have a few ongoing at the minute I'm going to start off with this one which is in my lovely new project bag I'm very happy with this it's so cute look at it um, so this is um, I believe they've changed their name now, actually. It was Thimble and Thread Make. And they've... Their shop's down at the minute because they're doing, they're making some changes. I can't remember what they're called now. I think it might be like accessories for makers or something. Um, but yeah, it was from Thimble and Thread Make. Um, and I just... I love this so much. I've been carrying this around the house with me. Um, so my latest uh, whip is in here. And it is the Harlow Sweater V-neck um, by Kadri. So despite being at the end of May, beginning of June, I'm on the big chunky sweaters. Um, <laughs> and this is a byproduct of um, my illness is that because I haven't been going outside, I've been in, in a kind of limbo since pretty much February. So the fact that it's like broad daylight until half past nine is bizarre to me. The fact that it's warm is bizarre to me because in my mind it's still early spring at the latest. So it does mean that with my projects I have still been sticking with the kind of autumnal, wintry, really thick, warm projects. Um, which is I'm going to love when it gets to September, October and I've got all these, all these really thick jumpers ready. Um, but in August I'm 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 not going to I'm not going to have helped myself <laughs> but this is where I am up to let's stretch that out a little bit so yes the Harlow sweater v-neck by Kadri um so big chunky sweater I'm honestly really looking forward to having this finished. This is definitely the kind of sweater where I can see myself kind of curling up in an armchair with a book and a cup of tea with this on. And oh, I just, I've got the image in my head. This this is exactly the vibe that I'm going for with this sweater. Um, because yeah, like I said, I've just, I've been sticking with the, the autumnal. I'm very much an intuitive crafter. I don't tend to plan out in advance what I'm going to make. I just kind of go with what I feel like making. 
you know sometimes I'll plan out and say well the next thing I make will be this but usually I'll finish a project and I'll be kind of looking through my queue and I'll be like I, f I just really feel like making this one now so I tend to just go with go with the vibes um and I really wanted a nice v-neck as well because I don't really have any v-necks that I've made I've made a lot of kind of normal kind of high neck ones um and in fact the Lawrenson and the um dark water both have a very similar neckline obviously I've made the Lawrenson before so a lot of the sweaters that I've made have had kind of that same neck line so I really wanted to try a v-neck just to kind of keep it nice and open and I always think they look really nice with a necklace as well um so this I'm, I'm actually loving this as well um I'm just I'm really excited to see how this one's going to turn out um I love that detail on the neck um apart from the pull at the front it's in desperate need of blocking <laughs> um but I'm very satisfied with that neckline it's it's very neat and I'm very happy <laughs> very happy with how that neckline's turned out I'm also utterly in love with this yarn as well um so I am using the camel's yarn um it is their DK weight in the colorway dawn haze and oh, I just I love that color um it's almost coming through on the camera um but it's just this gorgeous kind of pale browny beigey color but there is just the slightest hint of pink to it and it's just the most beautiful shade um it's a hundred percent merino it, this one's a superwash um i bought this at stitch fest in november um didn't have a plan for it then i just knew i needed it i just saw it and i was like i will find something to make with that yarn because i just absolutely fell in love with it but the one downside is that there were only four skeins in the same dye lot so with it being quite a chunky oversized sweater i am not going to get a full sweater out of four skeins and I did, I even contacted Hannah at the Camel's Yarn um, after um, after Stitch Fest and just said, look, I've bought this. Do you have any more in the same colour, in the same dye lot? And she said, no, she didn't. So I'm going to improvise, which I'm excited about, but we'll see how it goes. So my plan for this one is to go as far as I can in the original colorway i have these two and i've still got one full skein down there um, and the reason i'm working from two is because i'm going to try and go as far as i can with this colorway so i've paused the body for now and i'm going to start casting on one of the sleeves and i'm going to see how long i can get it in the original and then once I've reached my limit for how far that will go, I am going to do some colour work on the bottom. So you can see, uh, <laughs> not that I, you know, bite off more than I can chew because I've just done one colour work and I'm already now improvising colour work. <laughs> but I did buy, when she told me she didn't have any more of the original um, colour in the same dye lot, I did buy two in a different dye lot. So, uh, in a different shade sorry so this is pine cone ah that's just it's just such a beautiful rich brown so i have two of these and my plan is to design some kind of color work um for the sleeves and the body um just to slowly change from that paler beige into this lovely rich brown i've got no idea what my plan is for that yet i've got an idea about how i want it to look but i haven't started sketching out um how the color work is going to like a color work chart i haven't started on that yet which i really should because i've been ready to start sketching it out for a good week now <laughs> um but i'm really hoping that this turns out the way that i have it in my head um because if it does i will I won't ever be taking this sweater off um and it's just it is just the most gorgeous yarn i'm really in love with this um so as as devastated as i was that i couldn't carry on in the original colorway this is 
still absolutely beautiful um and i'm really looking forward to seeing how they work together because i think i think they're going to go together quite well they're definitely you can definitely see some kind of relations in the tones um so i don't think they'll be too far off um so we will see we will see. I love the camel's yarn stuff as well because um, it's all kind of based around Cornish landscapes and things. And I don't live in Cornwall, but I live very, very near to Cornwall. I spent a lot of time in Cornwall. So I'm very appreciative of the, the nod to the beauty of the area. So definitely watch this space for this one because it could turn out incredible. It could turn out not. <laughs> it's the way it works. So um, that is whip number one. Um, whip number two is I am going to talk about the portal blanket, of course. Um, so last time, last time, I can't even remember whether I showed this last time. I don't think I did. Um, no, I didn't. I absolutely didn't. And I remember now why I didn't. Um, so last time I came on the podcast, I was part way through um, the cake square. Do I have the picture prepared? Oh, I'm not sure I do. Oh no, I don't have the picture prepared. Um, so I've been making a blanket for my partner with all the portal symbols. Um, I've been using uh, colorwork crochet to make the portal blanket. I have now completed three squares. So when, uh, when I did episode 14, I was part way through the cake square and I now have a finished cake square the cake is a lie. <laughs> um, so last time I was up to where my stitch marker is, so I had done that much from the bottom. So since the last podcast, I have finished it entirely. I do have a couple of ends to weave in, um, but I have finished the third square in the third year that this project has been going on. It will be finished. I, If it kills me, I will finish it. Um, this was actually a little bit of a, had a bit of a weird moment with this because I finished this, I think it was two days before my birthday, um, in March and I was blocking it out and I took a picture to post on Instagram and, um, I was ready to post it. And then we do, we always do birthday cakes in my family. It's kind of a thing for us and my mum makes them and it's always a surprise. And then on the birthday she'll come and she'll show you the cake. So the day before my birthday she brought the cake round and I had just prepped the picture of this to post on Instagram and my birthday cake this year was a cartoon style black and white icing cake with fondant cherries on. How weird is that? I couldn't believe it when, when we kind of unboxed the cake I was like did you see this somehow and it was it was literally like that it had like kind of little icing swirls with cherries on and it was kind of like ed the the line art edging on the cake and i just i couldn't believe it i was like this is this is weird <laughs> um and it literally it looked exactly like this um so yeah odd odd coincidence there <laughs> um but um what i will say and please please withhold judgment is the portal blanket is going to be on hold for now and you know given that it's taken me three years to do three of these squares you're probably thinking well Nicola it's kind of been on hold this whole time really but it really is on hold for now um because I have a lot of things coming up this year um that I'm very excited about but I'm going to be very very busy with all of these things um so I do have a little bit too much going on to to be racing to finish the portal blanket and my partner doesn't know this and in fact he's the one that suggested that I put the portal blanket on hold so I'm not just making excuses here um so yes portal blanket is on hold so I don't know when I'll be starting the next square um but it likely won't be before September so you are unlikely to see any more portal updates until September at the earliest because I just have far too much else going on. And speaking of far too much going on, um, I one of the reasons is because I currently have five patterns that are in progress. Um, 
just in various stages of planning. I don't know. I'm definitely, definitely oversubscribing myself here. I'm hoping that I can get all five patterns out within a deadline that I have in my head. I might not. There is a very high chance that I might not, but I am an optimist and I will do my best. <laughs> um, so like I said, there are five, the, um, the platinum scarf just went live. So that one is done. I have two, one sat in front of me and I can see it and you can't. Um, I have two that are in progress where I've actually started the making process and started um, drafting out the patterns. Um, I have another two based on the current two that I haven't started, but they they are based on these. So there's a similar kind of theme. So the kind of, you could say they're, they're started um, because I have the basis for them. So those two. And then there's another one that I have kind of plotted out in my head and I have a very good idea of how it will work, but not started. So this is what, this is why the portal blankets on hold because I'm hoping to get all of these out very, very quickly. Um, and we will see. So I do have five crochet pattern design. Are they all crochet? Yes. Yes. They're all crochet. Um, so five patterns that are currently in various stages of completion. Like I said, definitely not oversubscribing here. I can totally manage that. <laughs> um, but on, um, on a definitely on like a more of a, I have achieved this note. Um, I have been keeping up with my, um, 2023 knitting challenge. So at the start of the year, I decided to, um, join, oh, I can't remember who's running it now. Um, it was a knitting challenge on Instagram and it's to use up 2023 grams of your stash throughout 2023. So I made myself a little, a little page in my journal to, to monitor it. And I am, I'm nearly done. <laughs> so, um, I've been, what I've done is I've kind of logged it using the colors, um, so that I can just get a little snapshot of snapshot of the colors that I've been making this year as well. Cause sometimes I do tend to use the same colors again and again. So I thought I would just see, and I've actually been a little bit, a little more varied than normal this year. There are quite a few greys. So I've done quite a lot of grey themed ones. What's that first? Oh yeah, no, I know what that one is. <laughs> I'm forgetting what they are. Um, so this one here, this kind of brownie one is my sweet summer tea. Um, so as of, as of now for completed projects, I'm not including in progress ones. I'm only documenting it when I've completed them. But right now I have used 1,686 grams of my stash in 2023, which I'm, I'm very much on track to get to, you know, 2,023 grams. Um, I might carry on and just see how far I can take it because my plan was to see how much of my stash I could decrease. And not all of this has been stash yarn. Some of it has been new. But for the most part, I think for the most part, it is all new. Uh, sorry, it is all stash. Um, I'll find it now. That one wasn't, but that one was, that one was, that one was. Okay, so a fair amount of it has been stash. We will see. We'll see how much more of it I can, I can get rid of this year because I have a lot of yarn. And I'm, I'm not normally the kind of person that will just buy it without purpose. I tend to have a pattern in my head and I will earmark the yarn for that pattern and then I'll buy it and then it will sit there for a while until I decide I feel like making that pattern. So I don't buy, you know, recklessly, but I do come up with ideas faster than I can make them. So on that note, acquisition. <laughs> um, I have been trying not to buy too much because like I said, this year I do want to reduce my stash a little bit. Um, but one of the first things I will show you is I'm very touched, very touched indeed by these. So um, I have very recently attempted to return to work after being very ill. Um, and uh, for those of you who are maybe might be new here, I work as a science teacher in a secondary school. Um, 
and obviously as a science teacher your absence is usually well as, as any teacher your absence is always noticed by the kids um and I have a knitting and crochet club that I run at school so obviously that club has not run for quite a while now because I haven't been there so now that I'm back at school some of my some of my crafty students um, they came up to me and they have been spending their time making some little things for me because obviously they didn't have the club so I'm going to show you what they've made me which I I genuinely I nearly cried in front of a room full of year tens which is not ideal but <laughs> so the first one um is a little a little rat which she said um is because I'm a science teacher she said it's a lab rat oh which is so cute and what I think was so clever about this he's knitting she's actually put little little cocktail sticks in and he's knitting which is just the most adorable thing um so that is absolutely amazing I am I'm, I'm made up with this and in fact he usually sits here um we've called him we've called him Remy um because one of my colleagues thought it reminded him uh re reminded them of the um the rat from Ratatouille so he's called Remy um and my little my little knitting lab rat so he lives here just just watching <laughs> you see him peeking out over my money box so Remy lives there and I had some other students who made a little bag actually so these were some of the granny squares that were donated for my granny square project last year um so they made we had some leftover squares so they made they made a little bag out of them which for a start was dead clever um so I have some biology themed some sciencey themed crochet which is so sweet so they made me uh, where's the other one get my get the fluff off it <laughs> they made me some conical flasks which is so cute I've seen um kind of crochet chemistry um kind of glassware before and I've always thought I should definitely make myself some of those so but now I don't have to because they've made me some little some little conical flasks um a nerve cell which that's just awesome I that, that's just so well done I couldn't believe that and you know you've got all the little all the little acts on um no that's not the word I really should know the word for that that's embarrassing like I said I've still got illness brain very much still illness brain so you've got all the branches there and um I just I love that that's so clever so clever um a little DNA a little spirally spirally DNA I just I can't believe it they've, they've they've done such an incredible job and then I think this one has to be my favorite because this is just so well done I can't I can't believe that look at how well done that is <laughs> I think that's the biggest thing it's just it's so neatly done and it's quite accurate as well um so yeah they've just got a lot of a lot of little biology crochet things which is so sweet and I've got I've got Remy Remy there as well so very very touched very touched um yeah so that was that was incredibly sweet um so they made me they made me those while I was off ill and yeah I nearly cried in front of a class of 14 and 15 year olds <laughs> so I, I had to show those because I just thought that was so sweet and very very touching um so I, I definitely had to show you those even though they, they are kind of acquisitions in that I've gained them but I you know it's not me buying more yarn although the next ones are me buying more yarn um so um I did say I would um talk a little bit more about Arcane Fibre Works. Um so as I mentioned, I am now affiliated with them. Um so if you use my code, um you can get 10% off your first order. And they did send me some yarn as well. So this was the first one. So this is the, the Cozy Cocoa colorway. I do have some more that they sent, which I will show you now. So the first one 
is this gorgeous foresty, foresty colourway. Just realised I'm covering it with my hands. Um, so this is back to my roots colourway. Um, and obviously, as you can see, you've just got these gorgeous, rich greens and browns. Um, and oh, it's just the most lovely blend. You can see that this is absolutely forest inspired. Um, and I'm very excited. I'm trying to decide what I want to make this one with this particular colourway. I've got five of these. Um, and I'm currently flip flopping between ideas. Um, I know what I would like to do but it's whether or not I have the time to do it. So I'm not going to commit to anything on here that I am um, not necessarily going to follow through on. But this, oh, it's just a beautiful rich. I really hope that's coming through. Try to get it so you can see it. I really hope the richness, yeah, is coming through. The green, the green is a little richer than the camera is suggesting, but the brown is coming through quite accurately. Um, so yeah, these, these are all DK weight as well, by the way. So these are DK H20 Merino Nylon. Um, it's 200 metres to 100 grams as well. So that is the first, uh, sorry, the second colourway. This is the first, this is the second. Um, like I said, very, very torn on what to make with this one, but it's just because I've got too many ideas. And now the next one I have to show you, I am utterly obsessed with. Like I just, I have, I've got an idea of what I meant to want to make with this, but part of me just wants to sit and look at it. But this is the cherry tea colorway. And I am in love with this. It is beautiful. So obviously this is a very variegated yarn. So you've got these, you've got, you have got some kind of cream patches, but a lot of them are just the palest pink. Um, and then you've just got varied, uh, like a variation of shades of pink and peachy pastely color. And then every now and then you'll just get these really rich, darker tones coming through, um, as, well as, as well as some kind of multicolored speckling that isn't quite coming through as much as I'd like on the camera, but, and I am in love. I literally just keep staring at this. Um, I do have an idea of what I want to make with it, but I just, I adore this color. It is so beautiful. So this is cherry tea. I can't remember whether I've said that. Um, again, double knit, um, 80-20 merino nylon blend. Um, but these colors, I just, from the second I saw the picture of this, I knew that I had to have some of this. Um, and I just, I love it so much. I can't, I, I keep saying the same thing, but I cannot overstate how enamored I am with this color. So I knew I would have to find something to make in it. And now I just get to spend my time enjoying, imagining what I want to make with this. So extremely excited for this one and what comes of it. So yeah, those are my two yarns, three yarns, including this one. I keep saying two. So this one's included. And then I've got these two as well. So from Arcane Fibre Works, and I will pop a link um, in the description as well so that um, you can follow it to buy some if you would like to, obviously no pressure. Um, so, my next acquisition I have so this is for a pattern I'm not going to show you the pattern but I am going to show you the yarn um, so I bought quite a lot of um, Bamu Lin I think that's how you pronounce it by Drops Yarn um, in this brownie colour which is called Five so in the colour Five um, so I have used this before. I used this, was it last year or the year before? I think it was last year to make my Juniper Top by Spirit and Thread Crochet. So I knew that I liked this yarn. It is a blend of 53% cotton and 47% linen. Um, so it does have quite a rough, stiff feel to it right now. Um, but linen does soften 
as you kind of block it, as you wear it. Um, but what I do quite like about this is the strength that it provides. And that is very important for the pattern that I have in mind. The only issue I'm finding is that my wrist, um, I've got a, a lingering injury from a few years ago, a very badly sprained wrist. So I'm having to design this pattern bit by bit, just so it doesn't aggravate my wrist. Which is what happens when you can't do your normal form of exercise and you lose all your strength. So I'm hoping that my wrist will build back up to its its normal strength. Um, but for now, I am having to just do this pattern in stages. So I'm hoping that I have something to show you very soon. We will see. But I have a lot of it, as you can see. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so this is Drops Bomberlin in the colour 5. So that is with a design in mind as well. So that is a design that is currently in progress. Watch this space. Um, what I also bought, and this is going all the way back to March now, there was, um, so anybody that's present on um, kind of the knitting and crochet side of Instagram may have noticed there were a lot of kind of indie yarn dyers that collaborated this year for a Pi Day kind of arrangement. Um, so Pi Day, uh, 14th of March, uh, 3.14. Um, a lot of dyers kind of all arranged different pies that they would theme their yarn and there were so many and I wanted all of them <laughs> um so I, I was very restrained I picked two I allowed myself to have two um so I kind of picked some of my favorite colors that I really really liked out of all these pie day colors and the two that I went with were these two so I'll talk about this one first. So this is Weku Yarn, who I did a dyeing workshop with at Stitch Fest last year. So um, they are fairly local. In fact, that's why I chose both of these, because their dyers are fairly local as well as because they're just beautiful colours. Um, so yeah, this was um, their colourway for the Pi Day potluck. Um, I can't remember what their theme was. I think it was some kind of berry. Off the top of my head, I can't remember. It is now nearly three months since I bought this. <laughs> um, but it is a sock yarn, um, obviously with a little mini mini skein uh, for contrast. So this one, I believe. Oh no, this one is 75% um, superwash merino and 25% nylon. And this one is 100% merino, 100% superwash merino. But they obviously pair together beautifully. So I do intend to make socks out of it as well um, at some point. Um, and I would very much like to use that contrast for heel and cuff, maybe toe, depending. Um, like I said, I can't remember which one this was. Some kind of berry, um, which I think they've done very well with on the dyeing. Um, I can't see the... Now they've not got the colour written down. Um, but yes, I just think I love the richness of those colours. So this was my first Pi Day potluck purchase by from Weku Yarn, who are, I think they're Somerset based. I think they're Somerset. They're kind of around a, an area like that, she says confidently. <laughs> so that was my first one. And then um, my second one was another one from the Camel's Yarn. Um, so the same as my Harlow sweater that I'm making. And I think this was pumpkin. Was it pumpkin? Pumpkin and ginger pie sock set. Um, so both of these are the same. So they are both 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. So pumpkin and ginger pie. And I just, I'm really here for these kind of orangey, orangey colours at the minute, hence the, the dark water sweater. Um, but I just, I'm loving that. And then you've just got the little speckles as well, which are perfect for for this colourway. Um, but then you've got just enough contrast with that pink for your heels and cuffs. So I'm, like I said, I'm intending to make socks out of this because I quite enjoyed my last pair of socks and I wouldn't mind some more knitted socks. So some 
some more sock yarn there. Not that I don't already have some sock yarn that is earmarked for socks. Like I said, I get ideas faster than I can finish them. So, but yeah, I just, I really loved that idea. The Pi Day collaboration between all the indie dyers on Instagram, um, you know, being somebody in a STEM field, um, I love any kind of crossover between the STEM side of me and the the creative side of me. So I, I, I knew I had to, had to do something with it just because, just because it kind of ticked multiple boxes for me. So I really liked the Pi Day collaboration. I hope they do more. I really do. I hope this is a, an ongoing thing and I hope it continues for more years um, because I just think it's a lovely idea. And my final acquisition that I'm going to talk about, um, I think, I actually don't think I have any more of them. Like I'm, I'm thinking for the finished objects, I've just kind of cherry picked some. But for the acquisitions, I've actually been fairly good. I haven't bought copious amounts of yarn. I think this might be it for the last four months. So I've done, I've done been okay. I've done okay. But I did treat myself at the weekend. Um, and in February, um, a new shop opened in Exeter. So um, it was an Along Avec Anna shop. And I've used her yarn before. Um, in fact, I've got some leftovers here. I used it for my Augustine's bow last year. Um, so I, I already know that I love her yarn. Um, and I thought, you know what? Now that I'm getting up and about again, I'm going to treat myself with a little trip to the Along of Ekana shop. So I did. And I bought myself a sweater's quantity of yarn. Um, so what I'm planning on making with this is the Accentuating Crew Neck by Zanetti Knits. I've had this one in my queue for a while because I mean that just looks like the coziest thing. Again same, similar to the Harlow one it looks like the kind where you curl up on the sofa or in an armchair with a cup of tea and a good book. So I've wanted to make this one for a while and I was a little torn on which colours to choose because I tend to gravitate towards blues and I tend to gravitate towards kind of pale beigey creamy whites. Um, so I wanted to do something a little, little less typical for me and I came out with these so they are both in exactly the same shade um, but this one is 100% superwash merino um, so this is a uh, fingering weight so yeah these are 50 grams um, but they're 200 meters so this is the fingering weight and the, this is the shade jade as well um, and I just really liked this kind of really pale sagey green colour. So I got uh, five of these, so there's some more over there. Um, so fingering weight, but then paired with the matching mohair. So this is a silk mohair, 72% um, fine kid mohair with 28% mulberry silk. So I'm very much looking forward to using these for the accentuating crew neck. Um, I think I really wanted to go for a paler shade with this. Not sure why. Um, there were plenty of dark shades that I think would look lovely, would look lovely for this pattern. But personally, I wanted to go for something a little lighter. Um, and I'm very excited to see how those work up. I'm not guaranteeing at all when I will cast this on but it's ready for when I do. <laughs> um, and yeah, I had a lovely chat with her in the shop as well. Um, Cause like I said, I've, I've bought yarn from her before. Um, and uh, we were stood there in front of the, in front of the display going, Oh, what color? And I was showing her the picture and she was like, well, that color and I'm proper having a little natter. So it was, it was really lovely. So if you're around the extra area, definitely pop in. Um, it's a lovely shop and I could quite happily have spent hours in there, but <laughs> I did need to, to leave before I bankrupted myself. Um, so yeah, I went in with an idea. I said, I um, went in with this picture going, I'm, I'm buying yarn for this and for this only. So properly, properly restrained myself and very well. But yes, I am very happy with this. I just, I love this kind of icy, greeny, sagey, jadey color. So there you go. There are all of my acquisitions. And like I said, given that I haven't done this in several months, 
I think I've done okay on acquisitions. I can restrain myself if I want to. But as I mentioned, goal for this year is to finish the year with less in my stash than I started. So I think I'm, I think I'm on the way there. Maybe. I'm not going to count because if I find out I'm not, then I'll, I feel like I've, uh, I feel like I've done it wrong. But yes. So that's all of my projects finished and in progress as well as my acquisitions and I've been going for over an hour now so I'm gonna leave it there I think um I'm not sure how often I am going to be podcasting um previously I was trying to do it every week or every two weeks um given my current health I'm not sure that's feasible for me right now um I don't want to push myself and end up back in the position I was in March because that was yeah I'm, I'm not gonna do that um so I will podcast when I can and as long as my health allows um I do have a lot of plans this year as well um so I'm also going to be making sure that I can do the things that I plan to do and if it comes between you know my pre-existing plans and a podcast I'm gonna choose my plans um, but I will keep you as updated as I can. Um, if you want to, if you want any more updates, obviously you can follow any of my social media accounts. Um, so yeah, um, if you have stayed with me to the end, um, then thank you very much. You've been very, very patient. Um, so hopefully it won't be too long before my next one. Hopefully not another four months, definitely. Um, Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. I hope you enjoy whatever you're making and yeah, see you soon. Bye.